Okay, let's get started. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is one of our, uh, our virtual lunch and learns that we've been doing now for the last four or five months. And a quick rundown on how we cover our virtual lunch and learns. Uh, they're meant to be at a fast paced, um, high level, uh, 20 minutes maximum. We don't wanna take up too much of your time. If you have any questions throughout, please ask, uh, we encourage it. If you have any questions afterwards, uh, you can take it offline and uh, we will make sure that we get back to you as fast as we can. We don't use any slides. I will put some links in the uh, in the chat feed, which I've done already to help uh, show some of the material. And uh, one of the positives about the uh, the pandemic that we've seen is that it's um, really accelerated our use of technology. It may be very hard for us today to talk to uh, 60 different customers in probably 50 different locations. So this is this is great. So uh, first 50 people, Jan sent over a, a link to uh, a gift card for an Uber Eats. Hope you've got that uh, that lunch card and you get to enjoy some local grub. So let's uh, let's get started here. Um, I'd like to introduce Stefan. Stefan is a senior crew leader of Service Master Clean Property Services. He leads a team in the field that cleans roughly 200 sites a year. So the old expression from Farmers Insurance is that he's seen a thing or two. So we're, we're lucky to have him with us today. He took some. He took a break from working. Um, working in the field. Uh, myself, I'm David Benwell, the General Manager and President of Service Master Clean Property Services. And uh, let's get started. So first, Stefan, how are you doing today? Um, hello, I'm good. And I'm looking forward to uh, share the opinions and um, answer the questions for the duck cleaning and the uh, vent cleaning. Are you ready? Yeah, oh yeah. This is Stefan's first webinar. So we'll, uh, we'll take him yeah, through. This is my Always first to... webinar actually. It's always difficult talking to a screen. So I still, I'm still not used to it. Okay, let's start with terminology. So when you're sourcing a, a, a dryer vents or a ventilation um, contractor, terminology is very important. So let's just keep this very simple to begin with. So we have exterior vent cleaning, and then we have interior and exterior vent cleaning. Um, we have maintenance cleaning versus restorative cleaning. So generally you're talking for maintenance cleaning, which is the standard cleaning, your annual cleaning of your vents. So let's get into it. So Stefan, when we're cleaning exterior vents, uh, how are we cleaning vents from the exterior? Uh, we use uh, the, the reverse air and then uh, to just uh, uh, 200 PSI and over uh, air pressure. Uh, we use the skip tools to just clean for the exterior vent. So we're using a push and pull system. So when you're cleaning from the exterior, you'd be, you'd be pulling everything out. Yes. Correct. Okay. Why don't you show us one of those tips you've got there? Okay, this is a tip that uh, this uh, this is a skip tip that has a reverse hole, and then when we're sending out inside the ducting, it's just the reverse air, and we pull it out. And uh, we have also the push tip, which is we use for the inside, and it's the spinner tip, and then it's just helping to just push it out. And then by this tool here to, that is connected to the hose, um, this hose here. Uh, we just use it and it's almost 20 feet and then we just send it in and then we pull it out all the links inside the dryer and the deep. Okay, now let's talk about interior and exterior cleaning. So now we're, clean, we're cleaning from the outside, but we're also entering to the units. How do you approach the cleaning from the interior? We use the pushing system to and the air pressure and we just pull it and push it all the links and debris to the exterior vent. Okay, so back because so we're, we're pushing and pulling, which is a great way to think about things. And the link I put into the chat feed will explain that. So now let's let's go over another basic item. It's um, and we'll, we'll get a little more technical with this. But how often should dryer vents be cleaned? Um, it's usually it's once a year. Uh, that's is and it depends to the, the the complex and the length of the dryer ducting. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we're saying once a year. Um, but it's, that's a very simple answer to a question there. What we recommend a lot is that uh, once a year, for, for sure you have to clean your dryer vents, but we're also saying that you might want to rotate every second year the cleaning from the inside. So once a year from the outside, um, every second year from interior and exterior. Now that all depends on the runs. You could have a very simple run that's you know five feet, then you and you're going to get your direct access outside. There's no corner of those bends. You probably just clean that from the outside every year. You could have a very complex run. Has a lot of cor uh, bends and corners into it, or has some, historically has had some problems. That you'd want to probably get from the inside every year. So it really depends on what kind of the complexity or the simplicity of your vent run is how we want to say that. So 
Okay, now off to uh, another question. What's the biggest challenge when cleaning dryer vents and stratus? Safety is the biggest challenge for the vent cleaning, for the exterior vent. Safety, okay, so when we talk about safety, um, now to the biggest challenge would be accessing, getting access to the exterior dryer vents. So how do you access the exterior dryer vents? Uh, the system that we're using for the exterior vent is uh, a fall protection system and aerial lift and ladders. Okay, sorry, I just put something in the chat feed there. So, okay, so we're, you access exterior dryer vents by using fall protection systems, boom lifts, and ladders. Yes. Okay, I can't, um, we can't stress enough that uh, when you're vetting your contractors to do any kind of work above 10 feet, that they've got the correct fall protection training certifications and the right equipment and the right game plan to make sure they're accessing it, accessing it uh, correctly. Okay, when you're cleaning dryer vents from the inside, what's the biggest challenge you face? Uh, the tight dryer vents limited access to the connecting pipe in the dryer closets and the connecting pipe to the back of the dryer is the biggest challenge. And would you say also that um, getting access to the secondary lint traps with, or, or oh, yeah? Yeah, and then also, yeah, in the completion you wrote is that uh, too many bends and turns and also secondary lint trap as well. Okay, now let's go on to the, uh, you know, one of the major issues. What's the most common, common damage that you see your cause from dryer vents that aren't maintained for, uh, on an annual basis? Uh, water damage in the ceiling, lack of air, uh, airflow, and the lint buildup or in a slab duct uh, damage or uh, crash during the construction. Those are the biggest, you know, the most common damage when I just clean the dryer vent. Okay, so we're getting water damage buildup in dryer vents. Um, my advice would be we want to stop that from happening because once it happens, it's very difficult to correct. And we've got the, uh, the hot air of the dryer coming out. We've got the cold air outside coming out. We've got the condensation. So when we have a reduced airflow is when we're having the challenge. So Stefan, if they have that problem, if they've got uh, water damage in the ceiling, you've got the, the yellow staining you see along the dryer vent run, what can they do? Uh, the, the biggest, uh, the, uh, the most, uh, the dumper system is, you know, it's the biggest challenge because that some, uh, the water damage that they happening, it's sometimes it's just going back to the, you know, the restrictive and then it's, they need to just, uh, fix it. And, uh, also the, the problem, one of the biggest problem is the, because the builders use the same exterior covers as the kitchen and the bathroom, which, you know, it don't have a damper and then uh, have a small grid system. That's why it's causing the damage and doesn't let the airflow just happening properly. Why don't you show us some of the samples you've got of vents? Start with the damper sure. system. Yes, this is this is what the usually the builders just the using for the the exterior vent and uh, or this one here. And uh, these are just uh, causing the problem, but the damper system, because of the habit floppy one, and it just let the airflow and the links just get out and just not causing the cloggage inside the ducting. We call these uh, SV56. They're from a company, um, Prime Tech, in, locally in Lower Mainland. We've done a lot of jobs where we change the dryer vents covers um, simply because, Stefan, can you show the first one that had the little, the little grills in it? Yes. Now we're talking more high rise buildings here. Low rises would be different vent covers, but you can see how tiny those are. Okay. And what happens is that will quickly clog up if they're um, definitely not clean lint drop, but it's going to clog up no matter what, probably clog up after a month. And what happens is once you get that reduced airflow, you're going to get moisture buildup. You're going to get some damage that we may not be able to, to deal with. So show the larger grill one for a second. This is better, obviously. Ideally, you want a damper system. It isn't possible in every building to put that into a slab duct, but they definitely should have something with grills, probably even a little bit bigger than this. But this really, um, this really is a lot better than what you saw before. The other ones are, again, what Stefan was saying is that when developers or builders build buildings, they simply usually stick the same vent, not to pick on them too much, but they simply put the same vent cover, kitchen, bathroom, and dryer vents. And the ones for the dryer vents have material coming through them where the other ones don't. So, um, okay, Stefan, they said we cannot see him showing the duct covers is not switched back to him unless he is talking. Okay, Stefan, can you show the vent covers again and talk? 
Uh, this one? Yeah, just start talking about it. Okay, uh, this this vent cover is, uh, you know, the, the dryer vent supposed to design, the cover for the dryer vent, it needs to be the open end. And that's mean, this one is not, this is the ones that we usually, you know, recommending to the people and the customers that because when they turn the dryer on, this flappy just open on, open down and then just let the airflow is just get out. And if, because the lint get inside the dryer and the ducting or, you know, you can't stop that. And then uh, that's why you need to the flappy one to let the lint get out and not just sitting back here like this. And if you notice inside this ducting here, and I just keep it one of, it's, it's not a little bit, you know, I don't know if you guys can show the lint, which is sticking here. And then that's why by the time they just clogging and doesn't let air go out and it's just a start to making the air condensation and the cold air versus the air, the hot air, because it's the air not goes out to the ducting and just sitting inside the ducting and it causing the damage and the water and moisture inside your ducting. And in that how it's causing the damage and the moisture over the, uh, over the ceiling and by the time and you know, over the month and you will see the water damage on the ceiling. But for this kind of the ducting, which is, it's pretty much um, we recommending. And then, you know, that's, this is the favorite one. And then this is just uh, the flappy cover. It just helped the, uh, the air flow, just when it start the dryer, air flow go out and then, you know, just let the dryer and the air, the, the heat and the air just getting out of the ducting. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully everybody can see that. So again, the biggest thing we're talking about here is that um, we're trying to eliminate the, the moisture buildup in the dryer vents. I've seen us clean dryer vents before where we have the tooling in the dryer vent and we're simply pulling water out. At that point, um, it's very difficult to correct. So we want to get ahead of that. So we want good airflow and we want to have a, a good airflow being the dryer working well, booster fans if necessary working well. The general rule for booster fans, because I still see a question here. Um, yeah, I still see a question coming in here. How, when you should have a 45 foot run, you definitely should have a booster fan. The general rule that I've, I've heard is anything over 15 feet should have a, should have a booster fan. Stefan, would you agree with that? Yes, and usually they, the ducting over 15 feet, it needs the booster fan. That's why most of the high rises, they're using the booster fan. And then uh, because it's held for the airflow and then just, you know, the shooting the air out to the ducting. I just saw a question come in and it said, uh, do you install booster fans? The, the answer to that would be no, it had, simply because it needs to be done by an electrician. So you need someone with uh, that kind of technical ability and certification to do that. So, okay, so we've talked about the water damage. Now let's talk about the um, number one reason people clean dryer vents, ironically, is the fire hazard. Um, it is a hazard that we have to be aware of. Um, but Stefan, do you want to speak to the uh, to the fire hazard of dryer vents? Yes, the fire hazard, the dryer vent system is uh, when you turn the dryer on, this is how the dryer is working. And most likely everyone knows, I'm just going to explain and just open up here. Uh, the, when you turn the dryer on, there is a heat element and also the fan is working, you know, back of the dryer and heat let the, just push the heat of the air, the element heat back to the dryer and just help it to get it uh, dry closed. And when the dryer vents not the, the dryer uh, venting is not clean, the heat uh, the lint can just build it up inside the dryer and just getting back again to the to that element that causing the damage and that causing the fire. Okay, so I'm going to get on to a question we saw here um, from Fred, and it goes, "Why are the same duct vents being used still? Has no one come up with a better system?" There is a better system. It's using the damper, but. Um, I'll agree with you there is that um, what's happening is they're just not being installed when buildings are initially set up. So what will happen on low rises is that we'll have smaller vent covers than the one you're seeing here we're dealing with, and they've got the grids in them. So if it has a damper in it, what we'll do is we'll cut out those grids to allow more airflow, okay? And also so it doesn't get clogged up reducing the airflow. Um, so it's something that um, we, we ask permission before generally, but sometimes we do, there's a damper, we just do it. But um, you're right, it is, it is a, I'd say, one of the problems. Uh, we've had many high-rise buildings um, where we've got the slab ducts, uh, the ones in the concrete that are generally the most problematic that um, we switched a lot of them out. And the vent covers themselves are maybe $15 each, $10 each, they're not expensive. 
It's the labor to do the one. So when you're doing the high rise work, a lot of this done from rope access, uh, depending on the positioning of their vent. Sometimes it can be on their balcony, but it's still faster by rope access rather than access to everybody's unit. Um, that's, that is a challenge. So that, that would be one of the major things. So I'm um, going to talk about central air for a second. So your central air system is your air makeup unit on your roof and your buildings. It's one option that um, not, it's probably the most overlooked maintenance items in Stratus. So it's the, uh, it's the fresh air being pumped into your hallways and then releasing through the doorways to the, uh, to the units and hopefully outside. Um, those should be cleaned every second year for sure. And maybe every year, depending on where your building is. If you're in a high traffic area, those just look at those, um, the screens inside, they will be covered with uh, outside elements that are going into your building. So it's something that you want to think about your central, with your central air as well. Okay, so I think we've covered off most of it there. Uh, the big thing when you're looking for a contractor is a safety track record, a safety culture, how they can access them, uh, what tooling they're using, um, what we're dealing with with dryer vent closets in tight spaces, and um, what else can I say here? And all, the biggest thing is controlling that airflow. Make sure we have a good airflow. Stefan, like when you're when you're troubleshooting a unit, you've been called in to do what we call a restorative cleaning, where we're doing more of an investigation using a camera checking things out. What's the, what are a couple of things that you look for when you're doing a restorative clean of a dryer vent? Uh, first of all, is the airflow. And we are just going to find out if it's the airflow, if it's the airflow happening or no in for the dryer. And in that case, we go investigate and just find out from inside and outside. And then we are, we are going to find out uh, what is the problem because sometimes, you know, uh, we just, again, we do the process and we send the camera to just find out what is the blockage and what is the causing the problem. Okay, perfect. I'm going to circle back to some of the questions now. So one of the questions was, I have a strata with 45 foot runs. Is the booster fan needed to push out the lint? Absolutely, yes. Yes. Um, okay, next question here was, can your tech tell if a duct is ripped or become unconnected when cleaning? Stefan, I'll direct that back to you. Uh, so technically when we when we getting the job done and then from inside the unit we make sure i'm mean, running the dryer and we checking the airflow and if if, the, if there is any leak or the problem as uh, sometimes we see even in the units before we getting there the, the if the docking has a problem we will report to the you know the to the property managers and or if if there is an easy fix or something that we can just tape it up we but we usually if we take the ducting off, we just make sure that the clips is on and the tightening by the screws and we also taping by the aluminum tape that which is it's using for the dryers, ducting. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna get to a couple more questions here. Um, the big thing we've talked about today, we've, we've identified as the, and one of the questions coming is about is what can you do about water damage in the ceilings? I'll take that one. Um, we talked about already, one, stop it from happening. So I mean, that's easy to say, it's hindsight. Uh, so regular maintenance, making sure we have good airflow, uh, educating your stratas on simple stuff. Like make, it sounds crazy, but make sure that lint trap is cleaned every load. That uh, stops a lot of this. Um, but once it's happened, what can we do? It's a tough one. I actually had an email from a client this morning asking about it. When you've got that water staining in the ceiling, I mean, you can correct your ceiling and paint it, but it's going to happen again. So we've got to find a way to get airflow if possible. Then we get into a restorative cleaning, what Stefan talked about. So we can use different tooling. Stefan, can you show one of your tools that has more of a scraper on it talks so they can see your screen? Uh, do you mean this one? Yes. So what does that do? This is it. This is technically is the, the spinner push. And when we connect it to the, you know, the 200 PSI pressure air, and we just send it by this, uh, by the hose inside, and it just starts to spin. When we press the uh, nozzle, this head nozzle here is a start to spinning and you just to pushing whatever is inside and just blocking the way inside the ducting. Okay, perfect. Now, one thing that we keep in mind is that this lint is often, is often uh, wet and heavier are stuck into the little grills of slab ducts to the edging of it. So it's not easy to, um, it does not easy to push, to push out. So what you can do is you can go to, if, if it's really that bad, the solution is to eliminate the problem with a ventless dryer. I know they don't work that well in Europe. Everybody uses ventless dryers and here we don't have very many of them. It's just the way it is. Or you have, to, I've seen also people build um, drop down, a uh, new drop down ceiling. Uh, they construct a drop down ceiling that goes into um, and then run a new vent run. But uh, the first thing you do is a more restorative clean. 
Okay, a couple questions here. Does Service Master use, okay, I'm gonna go up here. Does the nozzle damage the duct? Uh, it can damage the duct in the circular ones that you find in the uh, in the in the low-rise wood structure buildings. It it can for sure damage that ducting. Okay, the so you have to be careful though. What we're showing you there is we use more of that in the the concrete aluminum slab ducts. Yes, and it it, it won't damage. Okay. Second question here: um, Does Service Master use COVID protocols when doing interior vent cleaning? Let's let's talk about that for a second. So, back in March when we uh, then. Um, we call it the big germ like my nephew uh, does here. When it hit, and it hit hard because nobody understood how to protect ourselves. We understood, but we weren't 100% sure. Um, we shut down interior dryer vent cleaning. We did everything from the outside. This year, you know, we said we'll do it from the outside. Um, next year, when we've got this under control as a, as a community, we'll get, back to, uh, we'll get back to doing it from the inside. Saying that, we have done some from the inside. And the COVID protocols, Stefan, do you want to speak to what, what protocols you're, you and your team take when you're in, in entering units? Yes, uh, when we enter to, uh, to the unit, first of all, we have the PPE and then uh, be wearing our mask, we having the, you know, the disposal gloves. And then also uh, because we moving to, let's say the high rises and then we just getting in and out for so many units, we have uh, this in picture and then which is all the high spot that we touch, we just spray it the, the band effect and then we clean up the band effect by the high touch point that we touch it. And also we uh, wipe it down by the band effect again, all the holes and gear and equipment, every single unit that we're getting in and out to just prevent any spread of the virus. Okay, so, but again, um, we're really, um, we recommend that for the little time period, if, we, if your fire vents can be cleaned from the outside and it does a good, a good job, and it's going to keep your maintenance record and your airflow up for the year, I'd go that way first. Um, some buildings were entering 200 units. That's a lot of units to enter. That's a lot of people you're interacting with. So um, the crews, all, all our team also does it. Everybody in our company gets a text message every morning at 7.30 to do a daily health check. And that daily health check is one of our screening, our screening levels to help us, you know, make sure that we're being diligent and doing our, being safe and how we approach things. So, I mean, we can do it from the inside and we have, but if we look at a building, it's a fairly simple run. Um, we generally this year are going with outside only cleaning, but that's not, we will go inside, but we'll have to do a little more due diligence to make sure that one, that it needs to be done that way for this year. And two is that, um, you know, the building's all on the same side that the, the tenants um, or the owners and the units are leaving us alone in the workspace. Let us in, go into one of the bedrooms and, and let us do our work. So we're keeping our social distance as well. So. Okay, I got another question here. Um, this is, is great. I've gone into attics and emptied up to five gallons of water. Yeah, we've seen that. You know, dryer duct holes. Will your company do that for a strata? Um, it's not something we do very often. Uh, we can do it. Um, we do have extractors with our other divisions that we can use to, uh, to clean that water out. I've seen one in a couple complexes that we've done for townhouses where they got re-roofed. That's something we should talk about. And when the roofers, I don't want to pick on roofers, but we'll just say what happened here is they, um, when they disconnected the vents from the outside, they didn't reconnect the dryer vents and it was blowing lint into the attics nonstop. And that becomes a major hazard, hazard okay? So that's something when you're, when you're getting your complex re-roofed or any exterior cladding work done, uh, make sure they're reconnecting that, uh, that dryer vent or it doesn't become disconnected when they're doing their work because I think that's, that's more what I've seen than the water, um, but the water, the water can happen. So, okay, I'm just gonna check and make sure we got all the questions here answered. Um, Okay. No, I think that's it. Any more questions from anybody? I'll give it a second to look. We broke our rule. We're four minutes over. <laughs> okay. I'd like to thank you for joining. Um, thank you, Stefan, for taking time out of your day to come in the office. And you, I think you did a great job on your first webinar. And I thank think you. Uh, by the amount of questions and the amount of attendees, I think we're going to have to have you back again. So, um, okay. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy your, enjoy your week. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. I do have a recording of this. That'll be available, and if you want to uh, pass it around, um, just simply shoot me an email, and we'll and we'll get it out. So, okay, thank you very much, guys.